How much progress can a design degree dropout make if they spent 30 days creating graphic posters? As someone who loves being creative, I enjoy creating in all forms. However, ever since I dropped out, I stopped creating and the outcome? My skills were degrading fast. So that's why I came up with this challenge. To fuel up my creative juice and to help out my friend Jake, who's a current architecture student and loves graphic design, will judge my work. Do I still have what it takes to make good posters? Is a creative ability something one can develop or is it by sheer talent? Only time can tell. This is episode two of Out of Comfort where I challenge to seek for discomfort to help me grow as a person. Check out the collections I've made after this video. Now I should mention, I'll set some rules for this challenge. Each day must be completed with one singular graphic poster and I'm unable to edit further just to see the visual progress of each day. All my editing will be done using Photoshop, not sponsored by the way, but I have the freedom to use any medium I want. He's a tough one to impress. In terms of process, each of my graphic design posters will go through these stages. I brainstorm and sketch out what vision I have once I've decided the main element and style. Applying the rough sketch onto Photoshop or transferring that onto a medium. Tuning and sharpening up the graphic poster to the best of my abilities for that day. But there's one problem. I didn't know what makes a good poster. I've done graphics as a single unit, but not my entire degree. Well, better send my ass back down to step one. So I write down some quick notes on what makes a good poster. Hierarchy, having an overarching image or text that drags attention towards the viewer, placement of text and image, dynamic use of type, image, shape and form, and the use of balance, etc. But I don't know if I applied it into my poster in day one. It's okay. My text may look like black people's at the moment, but I hope it won't look like this forever. I wanted to improve my technical ability today, and I wanted to try a retro style poster, like these ones. Let's get learning. So I figured out some key things used in retro posters. The fonts used, such as New Cabell Black, Cooper Black, Futura Bold, Apple Garamond, Libre Bake Seville. Mmm, yes. I sound like an expert now, I know. Adding copy, scan, and magazine textures to give it that extra vintage feel. Also, inspirations through Pinterest can help, as well as websites such as Fonts in Use, where you can find fonts used in the posters, which makes it super useful to find them. And today, I'm leaning towards a vintage Nike ad poster. Because... Sneaker Drip. And I may have sharpened the retro style a couple more days. All right, day six, everyone. I think I've had enough of the retro poster look, but let's ask Jake for his opinion. I hope he likes it. Jake, 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 Jake. Yeah. Is it good? Is it good? Well, I think it's time to change it up. On day six, I decided to go for an acid design poster where it is kind of an aesthetic, kind of grungy, and I went for a Gundam anime look because I just love Gundam, so why the f not? I was gliding past these retro posters, but the acid design, oh, oh, it took way too fucking long. I spent two to three hours. That was the most mind numbing design poster I did. And I'm only on day six, so is it gonna get worse from here? I'll have to see. Um, so hopefully it'll be better tomorrow because I'm gonna try acid again. That's what it's called, okay? Just for the record. Anyway, oh. You know what? I was tired yesterday, but I'm back to face my arch nemesis. Acid, grungy looking posters. I was determined to learn a new technique, even if it took hours. Because what's the point of this challenge? What's the point if I'm not putting in my all? And what perfect combination than AOT and grungy posters? So... Ba boom Look at that sexy thing. The best one yet. I tried to start off a day with another grungy design poster to tie it off, but then the unthinkable happened. After looking at all the work I've done for the past week, I've kind of realized that they all look generic. Everything can always be seen through Pinterest and it just looks like a copy of something else. It lacked character, it lacked uniqueness, and I didn't like that. So, I decided to make an absurd looking poster for day 8 with a grungy taste to it. I opened up my laptop, I looked at all the stickers I currently have on my laptop, and I have a cat one. So I thought, cat world domination. Let's get into it. I showed Sensei Jake my work, but 
I got critiqued and let's just say it was humbling. You'll never be good as me. You're just too bad. The composition is dog. Is that a kid spot? Who do you think you are? So the master proposed the apprentice a schedule to follow for the next week. In doing this challenge, I think it was great to start off with learning technical abilities, but what's the point in learning all that without knowing the general basics of what makes a good graphic poster? Maybe after finishing all the basic posters, I'll be able to level up and create my own posters again. But until then, we'll go back, back to basics. So in terms of day nine, I had to make a poster with one main central image that has text that supports it, ultimately creating a nicer composition. So I thought it'd be a good idea to add a cute photo of Jake and I holding flowers while still looking intimidating. Though it's simple, it turned out amazing. Simple composition using grids helped me a lot with this. The next one on the checklist was using just text. And I thought originally, how the f*** do I do that? Like, it's just text. I need an image. I need something. But the more I snooped around and looked, the more I realized there's an endless possibility with text. I went for a Japanese inspired design that says culture. All right. Next up on the list is an album cover. And you know, I had to bring in my favorite artist, Keshi. Please make a comeback. I used the color palette of his recent album, Agnostro. I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly. Let me get that checked. Angostura. Angostura. I like it, Picasso. Until the next day came. On this day, I was actually doing a challenge of Out of Comfort series while still doing this graphic challenge. That video is actually up on my channel now. So if you want to check it out, please do so after this. But basically, I felt burnt out. I just couldn't get the creative juices to flow. Today's schedule was meant to be a customized text using Illustrator, but I'm embarrassed to even show you guys this. There. It looks like I just went back to kid pics art. Like, what the fuck? <sighs> Let's just sweep this under the rug and pretend that never happened, okay? <laughs> pretend that never happened, please. Uh. All right, picking back up from the lowest of lows so far. Today I had to use a personal photography, so I chose the hottest, sexiest thing I could find on my camera. Me, of course. So humble of me, I know. I love the way this turned out. I'm really digging the yellow on this poster. Day 14 was copying a preset and making it goofy, so I chose the legend himself, Permanent Glue, or Jesse Nyberg. I'll put his links in the description down below. This is my take to make it goofy. So, like, are you still watching? Well, I mean, it's kind of an obvious answer, isn't it? But follow what the poster says here, or else the Grinch will make you hit the subscribe button. On a side note, I wanted to do this challenge because my room is currently looking empty. It has no character. I still haven't found the poster that I like enough to put it on my wall. So let's hope I make something good in this tiny three by three room. On day 15, all the weekly challenges supplied by Jake has all been completed. So. I had the freedom to do what I wanted. So I wanted to pay homage to the anime of the year, Cyberpunk Edge Runners. One of my favorites actually so far. Right, day 16. Continuing this anime trend that I've been subconsciously been doing. All Might, yes, My Hero Academia. Don't say it's cringe, move on, shut up. And anime again, and anime again. I'm not a weeb, okay? As we kept moving through this challenge, I felt like I was picking up my groove and actually doing these posters well after that horrendous attempt. Oh, my head. So I customized the text, Revenge Part 1. But then this happened. All right, it's day 19. <laughs> I felt this urge of wanting to give up. But you think I'd do that? You think I'd accept failure? You think I'd easily quit? So I did something about that tiredness. I wanted to express that feeling in that poster that I'll be creating. The strip of word tired, dragging along the page, just like how I felt with this challenge. Dragged and feeling like there's no end to it. But hey, the post looks sick. On day 20, I wanted to show my love for this platform, YouTube. Not gonna lie, at this point onwards, just wanted this challenge to end. Just contemplating, why did I do 30 days? What the fuck? All right, day 21, we got revenge part three on day 12 with another text focused poster. Though it wasn't the best, it's alright. I feel like day 12 has had a huge backlash on me. Like, I made four word-focused posters now. Do I have a problem? Maybe I do. But this feeling of pulling through became stronger as the finish line became closer and closer day by day. For some reason, on this day I felt sad, so I thought about Demon Slayer. Spoiler alert, skip to insert time. I'll give you guys time to skip if you haven't watched Demon Slayer, which 
what the fuck? All right, time's up. But one thing led to another, and I thought about. Hold up, this, this sounds super hypocritical. Can we just backlash to what I said before? I'm not a weeb, okay? Stop the cap! Anyway, this one took the deepest of turns in my posters. Grief. Fuck, this is dark. What What is going on? This challenge is no longer fun, wholesome, innocent. No, we're going with grief. <sighs> I miss you, bro. Come back. One artist wasn't enough, so Japanese represent Fujikaze. You've probably heard of his famous TikTok song that blew up. Simple and effective poster. On day 25, this poster effectively represented how I felt on that day. Fried. I'd like, who chooses a yellow background? But the phrase, can this challenge end already? With a please. And to top it off, pleading emoji. It gives a pretty good thought process of how I felt throughout this challenge. I still can't get over that emoji. Please. On day 26, I thought about the recent war outbreaks going on around the world. And I wanted to create this post of peace, so I wanted to convey that message by creating something simple and modern. On the bright side, on day 27, I wanted to create a poster of my Grail watch. Grand Seiko Snowflake SBGA211. I think I got the code right. If you haven't known by now, I'm a bit into watches. But look at the cleanliness of that poster. This has got to be up there on the potential posters that I'll be putting up on my wall. These last few days had felt longer as the finish line was so close, yet so far. I knew I had to keep pushing day by day. And this was it. The final day has finally arrived. Throughout the challenge, I've gone through a roller coaster of an adventure, and it's been all worth it. The joy. The stress, the feeling of just wanting to give up, tiredness and question my existence and why I chose to do this 30 days challenge. But that does not matter now. I am here. The best poster I can possibly make. Let's get this shit done right. This was day one of making graphic posters for comparison. And this is my final day of making posters. We did it. 30 grueling, harsh days of designing posters with no prior experience. I give myself a pat on the back for all that poster making. I mean, look at that. Simply amazing. I thought they were pretty good, but let's call Jake to find out. Yo. Yo, 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 Jake. What did you think of the day 30 post I just sent you? Nah, uh, it's all right. Really? Johnny. Which one was your favorite posters? Let me know in the comment section down below. If there's one thing I've learned in this challenge, it's this. The importance of showing up regardless of how you feel. Sitting down to do the task you set yourself to do is rewarding when you do it. To do it, even when you don't feel like it. Because what matters most is not producing the best work possible every single time. It's about producing the best work possible on that specific day. Because if you've seen my work throughout the past month, it's everything but consistent. It would be a lie to say that my work got better every day, though that would be the perfect reality. The progress wasn't ever linear. There's been uphills, downhills, and that's all part of the challenge. I completed the challenge overall because I made a poster every single day. You saw here with your very own eyes that anyone can improve their skill set. If you have something that you want to get better or just simply start, try focusing on that one thing for a short period of time and you may not be amazing at it at first, but the skills will blossom over time. Trust the process. You don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. Thank you everyone for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Janet. P.S. Grinch said subscribe, so do that now. Johnny.